said to Nicodemus, except you be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus was sent forth from the Father to give you eternal life. It was God's plan to redeem you unto Him. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. Hi, I'm Reverend Victoria Fury. I am really happy that you are joining in with these programs every week and being ministered the Word of God. I would like for you to, if anyone out there has been healed, a, a physical healing in your body from these programs, that Jesus Christ has healed you, I'd like for you to connect with us. You can go to Victory Christian Church, their uh, Facebook. You can go to Victoria Fury's Facebook. You can make a comment. You can also call the number at the bottom of the screen after this program and let us know how this program has been touching your life. And if you received a, a healing and a miracle in your body, we'd like to hear your comments out there. God bless you. I'd like to just start in prayer today because we're going to teach on the Holy Spirit's ministry. I love the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and that is the ministry that Jesus gave us. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the viewing audience today, Lord. I thank you for every household. I thank you for every family, every person watching, Lord. I ask, Father, for the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the inspirations of the Holy Ghost be upon this program today. I thank you, Father, for healing and touching people's lives and restoring their families, restoring marriages, Lord. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the revelation of Jesus Christ becoming deeper and richer into the hearts of the people. In Jesus' name, God bless you for watching. If you have a Bible there, if you don't have a Bible, that's fine. You just listen. God bless you. Acts chapter 2, it's the day of Pentecost. Now, the day of Pentecost uh, was commissioned by Jesus to the apostles. They were commissioned by Jesus to go to Jerusalem and to receive the endowment of the Holy Spirit. He said in Acts chapter 1, 8, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, to the uttermost parts of the earth. And shortly after that, Jesus ascended unto the Father. And they watched him enter into heaven. The angels were there. Hallelujah. And then they were in the upper room, 120. Even Mary, the mother of our Lord, with the disciples and the apostles. And they broke bread and were in prayer, and they were in expectation to receive what Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Comforter. I'm going to send you the promise of my Father, the Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it states, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, like as of fire. And it sat upon each of their head, each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men of every nation under heaven. And when this noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language. 
In verse 8 it states, and how we hear every man in our own language, in our own tongue, wherein we were born. And they were speaking about the wonderful works of God in that language. And it states that in Acts chapter 2, verse 11. And so I'm going to give you a little bit historical revelation of prophetic utterance from the prophets of the Old Covenant on the day of Pentecost and about Jerusalem, how it was the chosen city of God called the city of truth. Also, explaining, giving understanding how God has an appointment set, a set time and purpose for the ministry of the Holy Spirit upon the earth that came in that upper room. That upper room is where the church was born in Jerusalem. That is the early church was born in Jerusalem in the upper room with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Through the prophet Isaiah, it states in verse, chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Now we just read how there was other nations under heaven that day and they heard them speak in their in their native language the wonderful works of God hallelujah verse 3 of Isaiah chapter 2 and many people shall go and say come let us go to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Notice the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. That's where Jesus commissioned them to go to Jerusalem to receive the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost. And the word of the Lord was given to the apostles. And the word of the Lord came forth at the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem and Je devout Jewish men of other nations were there and heard them speak in their own native language the wonderful works of God so the word of God was being proclaimed and Peter the Apostle Peter that received the revelation he received the revelation before Christ died on the cross Jesus came into the coast of Syria, or not, excuse me, not Syria, but Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they, they said, some say that you are uh, John the Baptist, or Elijah, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And then Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus spoke to Peter and he said, Simon, son of Barjona, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See, the revelation is Jesus Christ. There's no other foundation that will be laid but Jesus Christ because he is God manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit. And so he received that revelation, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And when Peter actually denied the Lord before he went to the cross and Jesus spoke to him that You'll deny me three times before the cock crows, and it happened. But Peter wept bitterly, and he, he saw the crucifixion. He's, he was eyewitness of the resurrection, 
on the road to Emmaus with Cleopas. He spoke with the Lord. The Lord revealed himself. He's, he's, he spoke to them and he said, See my hands and see my feet. See my side. A, a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see me have. Jesus appeared to them and he had uh, abraded their heart of their unbelief and began to speak about what the prophets had foretold of his coming and his resurrection. And then he commissioned them to go to Jerusalem. And then when Peter was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and all these devout Jewish men out of other nations under heaven were there, they began to speak, what is this? And Peter said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servants and upon my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And so that was a sign of the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem. So Peter had a transformation on the inside. The spirit of the living God came on the inside of him. And he spoke by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of the prophet Joel. And that prophecy was coming to pass that very day. And then he continued to preach to the people in Jerusalem and and he began to preach repentance and remission of sins and that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so it was at Jerusalem that the word came forth with power and miraculous miracles followed Peter's ministry and the ministry of the apostles and the evangelist. And they were all stayed in one accord and they began to break bread and have communion and pray and the power of God began to move. Because when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke in a brand new language. And that language was the language that the Spirit of God gave. And that was a prayer language. And it states about praying in the Spirit in the Ephesians. Pray in the Spirit, make supplication in the Spirit. And Apostle Paul, he said, praying in the Spirit, praying with your understanding. And, and when you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying in another language. It's the language that God gives. It's His language. It's His intercession inside you, praying the perfect will of God over a situation. It's amazing how God puts his spirit within us when we receive Jesus Christ and then an endowment of the Holy Spirit comes in. And then out of your innermost being, the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And that's the spirit of God in you. It begins to come up out of you. And it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is called the gift. And he comes in to those who obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so I'll continue on with prophetic fulfillment in Micah chapter 4, verse 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. People shall flow into it. That very day in the day of Pentecost, there was 3,000 souls that got saved. And it continued on and on as they ministered, then 5,000 souls got saved. See, Jesus added to the church daily those are to be saved because they were preaching Jesus Christ to the people. They were preaching about his cross. They were preaching about the blood of Christ. They were preaching about his resurrection. 
And that's why the great grace, that means the divine ability was so abundant of God upon the early church that it was influencing their heart and as it was reflecting in their life. And the manifestation and the demonstration of God's Spirit was so prevalent upon their lives that even when Peter ministered, the shadow of Peter passing by, people got healed and demon spirits came out of people. He was carrying the presence of God. He was carrying the glory of God. Hallelujah. In verse 2 of Micah 4, it says, And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways. We will walk in his paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Notice, the word of the Lord, and it came through Apostle Peter. Hallelujah. And then all the evangelists and all the apostles, they start coming forth from them. Now in Zechariah chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, it states, And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. And the Lord shall inherit Judah his portion in the Holy Land and shall choose Jerusalem again. Hallelujah. Now the word of God states in uh, Psalm 135 verse 21, Blessed be the, the Lord out of Zion, which dwelleth at Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 9, verse 10 and 11. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwells in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. They were declaring among the people the Lord Jesus Christ. They were declaring among the people and God began to confirm the gospel being preached with signs and wonders. In 1 Kings 8.1, it talks about the city of David, which is Zion. 2 Chronicles 5.2, it states, to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of Zion, which is or the city of David, which is Zion. So the city of David which is Zion, which is in Jerusalem. Now, the Ark of the Covenant was in the Old Covenant with the Ten Commandments. And then you have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit confirmed in Acts chapter 2, which was prophesied by Joel the prophet in Joel 2, 28 to 32. Now, in Luke 24, 49... Jesus said, and behold, I send the promise of the Father. Notice, Jesus said, I send. I send the promise of the Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued. That means a clothed with power, which is miraculous power. By implication, a miracle itself, a mighty deed, a worker of a miracle from on high. So they're going to be endued with the person of the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus was clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit when he came out of the river Jordan. Now in Matthew chapter 5, verse 35, it states, Jerusalem is the city of the great king. In Psalms 48, verse 1 to 2, great is the Lord, greatly to be praised in the city of our God, that's Jerusalem, in the mountain of his holiness. Verse 2, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. The city of the great king is Jerusalem. Second Chronicles 6.6, 6, but I've chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there forever and have chosen David over my people Israel. 
The word Jerusalem, the name Jerusalem in the Hebrew means to flow as water, like rain, to point out, to teach. It's like an archer, to direct, inform, instruct. So God was instructing by the Holy Spirit through his servants, the apostles, and to the disciples in Jerusalem. John chapter 18 this is before the crucifixion. It states in John 18, 36 and 37, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Notice that. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by him. He's the mediator between God and man. Hallelujah. Now in John 19, verse 19, Pilate wrote the title and put it on the cross, and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And now notice that writing, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And if you go back to 2 Chronicles 6.6, 6, but I've chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there. His name was upon the cross that he died on. His name was sealed in blood upon that cross. The blood of the everlasting covenant of the Lord Jesus Christ, what he finished at the cross for every human being was sealed in blood and his name was written upon that cross in Jerusalem. And it said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, to bring you in remembrance that when he was born, when Jesus was born, the wise men came from the east and they came to worship him because they saw his star, that there was a king born. They knew. Hallelujah. Then the word of God states in Matthew 2.23, And he came and dwelt in the city of Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Jesus was called a Nazarene. And that's why they wrote that on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am so grateful for the cross of Christ. I'm so grateful for the blood of Jesus, the redempting power of the blood of the Lamb. Isaiah 44, verse 6 states, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, Notice, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. So there's no, there is no other God. Jesus Christ is God. Hallelujah. Revelations 1.8 I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. The Almighty. He is the Almighty. Let's go to Revelations chapter 1. If you have a Bible there, you can turn there to Revelations chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So he washed us from our sins. That means the sins of us in his own blood. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail 
because of him, even so, amen. And it goes on to say, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning and the end. Glory to God. He is the Almighty One. He was before Abraham. He was the self-existent one. God so loved you, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Now in Isaiah 41, verse 4, it states, Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first and the last, I am he. In Acts chapter 6, it talks about how they gave themselves to prayer and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And they, the disciples begin to multiply because they begin to lay hands on them and the Holy Spirit was imparted and disciples increased, the word of God increased. And they continued in the apostles' doctrine. Hallelujah. The word of God states in Isaiah 62, 1, the prophet declares and cries out for Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. And in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 3, the prophet declares Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. In Amos chapter 9, verse 15, I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them. Psalms 102.16 For the Lord shall build Zion and appear in his glory. Second Chronicles 33.7 In this temple and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. He put his name forever there. I want to pray with you right now. If you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this is your day. Just say, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I put my faith in you today, Jesus, and I declare that you are my Lord today. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you would like to support Times of Refreshing, please make donations to Victory Christian Church, care of Times of Refreshing, at 112 Pine Street, West Union, Iowa, 52175. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.